graphics so that using the command line interface is very easy, even if you're not a very good typist, which I'm not at all. Okay, so uh, so let's let's get down to it and start learning some commands that we can type in at this command line interface. So PWD is the first one, and that stands for Print Working Directory. So I hit PWD, and you can see uh, the working directory that I'm in, and that's the full uh, name of that working directory. Slash home slash Perry is the way that we'll read that. Okay, and and actually, um, let's talk about this too. This is the command prompt, and this has a lot of information in it. A uh, part of this information actually has to do with this working directory. So here on the very end, let's start there. Uh, this is the directory that I'm currently in, and it doesn't. It's not the whole name. It's not like slash home slash Perry. It's just the very last piece of that name, which is Perry. Okay, so that tells you uh, what directory you're in. Uh, it gives just a succinct way of representing what directory you're in. Now, the first part of this prompt up here is what user you're logged in as and also what machine you're logged into. So this is good when you're working over the network or if you're a system administrator and you're changing back and forth from the, what we call the super user or the root account to your normal account. This will let you know which account you're logged into right now, whether you're logged into Perry or, or the root account, which is the administrator's account in Linux. Okay, so so uh, the prompt tells you a lot of information. The PWD just uh, displays some of that information in a longer form. Now, another command that's good to know is the ls command. We use this all the time, and that lists the contents of a directory. So I'm in the uh, slash home slash Perry directory. So if I do an ls, that will list all the directories and files in in the slash home slash Perry directory. I do that, and you can see the only directory I've got so far is this uh, hold directory. Now the hold directory, uh, I can tell this is a directory and not a file because it's blue. And maybe on your version of Linux it's not blue, it's some other color, or maybe they don't do that scheme, and then you just have to know uh, whether it's a directory or a file that you're talking about. And we'll talk in later videos how you can determine that if you don't have this nice color-coded uh, scheme, which most versions of Linux actually have this color-coded scheme now. Okay, so that's the ls command to uh, list the, the contents of a directory. Another command is the cd command, which stands for change directory. Now change directory, what you do is you specify the directory that you want to change to after you say CD. So here I'll say CD hold, and that'll change my directory one level down into this hold directory. Okay, so I hit enter there, and now I do a listing in there, and we can see the stuff in that directory. Okay, uh, there's a the couple files in that directory. Another thing that I can do is uh, do a PWD here, uh, and you can print your working directory. You can see I'm in slash home slash Perry slash hold now. You can also see as soon as I did CD hold, my prompt was different on the very next line. Uh, hold was was the directory that I was in, and again, it's just the very last uh, piece of that directory name that gets displayed inside the prompt. All right, so that's uh, PWD, LS, and CD. Let me just show you another variant of CD here. If you say CD and then you put a space and you say dot dot, that'll move you up one level in this directory hierarchy. So here I'm in slash home slash Perry slash hold. If I say CD dot dot, when I'm done with that command, that'll move me up one level, so I'll be back in slash home slash Perry. Let me hit enter there, and you can see now that my prompt has changed back to Perry because I'm in the slash home slash Perry directory. Now let me show you a couple tips or tricks uh, so that you have an easier time interacting with this command line interface. The first thing I'm going to show you is command completion, and then the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, the history function. Okay, so command completion, what that does is it just allows you to complete commands and file names without having to type the entire file name. So here, let me just show you something. So I'm in the slash home slash Perry directory now. I'll do an ls, and you can see there's that hold directory there. Now say I want to go down into that hold directory. So I can say cd, and I can say h, and then if I just hit tab here, then the computer completes the command for me. So that's what command completion is. You hit the tab after you've specified some part of the name, and then the rest of the name comes out. So what that does is it just uh, saves me from typing out this name. Now hold is not a very long name, but if that file name was, was much longer uh, and it was the only thing that started with H, I still would only have to type H and hit tab and it would complete the file name. So what it does is it completes it as long as it can determine what it is, as long as you've, uh, what you've specified so far allows it to, to finish it in a, some unique way. Okay, so so I'll, let me go into CD. Uh, let me change my directory to hold here and I hit enter. And now I'm in the hold directory again. Let me do an ls, and now you can see uh, there's these various Linux syllabus things here. Okay, now um, say I want to do something to one of these files. Let's talk about the uh, copy command. Okay, so CP stands for copy. So I could copy uh, Linux syllabus.txt to a different uh, to a different directory or a different file name or something like that. 
So copy all it does, it'll leave the original alone and it'll make a new copy of the file to whatever I specify. So here, let me show you how to use uh, command completion within the copy command. So here, let me just type LIN and then I'm going to hit tab. Now notice it went out to Linux syllabus with a period, but then it stopped. Well, the reason it stopped there is because it didn't know how to complete it. It knew once I typed LIN that the next bunch of letters must be UX uh, underscore syllabus because both of the file names in this directory start with Linux underscore syllabus. Okay, so it knew that much, but it doesn't know at the end whether it should be uh, .pdf or .txt. So if I type T now, and then I hit tab again, it'll, now it knows exactly how to complete it because that, that specifies it uniquely. So command completion will complete it as far as it can, uh, and then if there's some you know, conflict that it doesn't know how to resolve, if there's two files or three files that, that it could be, then it will just stop where, where it has to and let you finish it. Uh, once I type the T, again, I hit the tab again, and then it was able to complete it because at that point it was unique. So I can copy this to something else. I could just say uh, Linux3.txt or something like that. Okay, so this is the copy command. It leaves the original alone, but it creates a new copy of the file called this, and it'll be in the exact same directory. And I hit enter, and if I do an ls now, you'll see that there's Linux3, Linux, Linux underscore syllabus.pdf, and Linux underscore syllabus.txt. All right, so that's command completion, and that comes in really handy, especially when you're dealing with long file names, and especially if you're like me and you're like a really poor typist, okay, and you don't want to have to type out these really long file names. Uh, command completion just saves you all sorts of keystrokes. Now, another thing that can save you some keystrokes is the history command. So if you hit the up arrow on your keyboard, you see the last command that you executed. If you hit the up arrow again, you see the command before that. You hit the up arrow again, you see the one before that. You hit the up arrow again, the one before that, and so on. Okay, so you can just go back and do any one of these commands that you want in the command history. If you want to repeat them exactly, you can do it that way. Or if you want to edit it, um, you can do that as well. So here's this command that I did a couple commands ago. And I could just go back here with the, with the uh, left arrow and change this and then hit the backspace and type in 4. Okay, so I could do another co uh, copy command and create a new file called Linux 4, and all I had to do was hit the up arrow a couple times, go back and change that 3 to the 4, and I didn't have to type this whole command out again. So if you're doing some sort of repetitive task where you're doing the same series of commands over and over and over again, uh, the history function d saves you all, a lot of keystrokes in that regard because uh, you don't have to type these commands out again. You can just hit the up arrow to go back and retrieve some previous command. Well, let's just forge ahead here and talk about some more commands. Actually, I did one while the uh, video was paused. I typed the clear command, which just clears the screen, and it, and it just makes it nice. It just reduces all the clutter on the screen so you can see exactly what you're typing and what the output of, of what you're typing is. Okay, so uh, that's the clear command. Um, let's do an ls in the directory again just to see all the files in there. And let me show you a new command called rm, which stands for remove, uh, which basically will just remove or delete a file from, from your uh, directory. Okay, so what you can do with the rm command, uh, actually with uh, most Linux commands, uh, like rm, you can actually specify options for the command. So you can specify an option like this, usually with a minus sign and then some letter. So the i here stands for inquire. So the operating system is going to inquire and make sure that we want to remove the file that we're specifying. So if I say something like this and then say linux3.txt, okay, this is going to remove linux3.txt from, from, the, from the directory here, but it's going to ask me first and double check and make sure that I really want to remove that. And, and later I'll show you how to make the minus i option uh, sort of permanent for rm so that you can't just, you know, delete a file accidentally and, and then it'll be a real pain to get it back. You'll have to get it off some backup tape or something. Like when you remove it, it's not like in a trash can or something like that where you can uh, retrieve it later. It's really off the system for good and, and it's going to be a big pain in the butt to try and get it back. Okay, so I'll hit enter here, and now what it says is, do you really want to remove Linux3.txt? And if I say Y here, or I can type yes, or something like that, uh, and hit enter, then uh, that, that file is now removed. And if we do an ls, you'll see that file Linux3.txt is gone. Now, another useful command to learn is the move command, mv. Uh, and what that does is it moves a file from one name to a different name. So uh, some people call this the rename command because all it really does is rename a file. You, you lose the old copy of the file, unlike the copy command that retains the old name and just creates a new one. Move gets rid of the old one and just leaves, leaves the new name or the new version of the file. 
Okay, so here I can say something like this. I, I'll say L-I-N, I'll hit tab, and it completes it as far as it can. I'll hit T and 